thanks everyone for uh, being here today. Uh, we're lucky to have Delia Furtado from the University of Connecticut. Uh, she's an associate professor of economics there. She's also a research fellow at the Institute for Labor Economics. Uh, her research areas are in economic demography and the economics of immigration. And she's published in uh, the top, journal, top field journals and great general journals. Her work has appeared in the American Economic Review and Demography, uh, the Journal of Human Resources, where she's published with our own uh, Catalina Miorantes here on, on immigration policy. So we're fortunate to have two of the leading uh, experts in immigration policy in the U.S. in the room here today. So uh, thanks very much, Delia, for being here to present on immigrant inflows and quality of care in nursing homes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here to tell you all about immigration. So when I first started working on immigration years ago, it was an interesting topic, but it wasn't as controversial as it is today. So now when I tell Uber drivers that I work on immigration, they want to know the answers. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so lots of people have been thinking about immigration policy. What are the welfare impacts of immigration? Lots and lots of debate among everybody, it seems, on do they take natives jobs? What are the labor market effects of immigration? There's controversy, I'm not going to talk about that so much today, but we're not only workers, we're also consumers, and so it's also important to think about how immigrant inflows affect us as consumers, um, and specifically maybe the prices of the goods that we buy or the quality of the goods that we buy. Today I'll be talking about one specific market, the nursing home market. Why is this particularly exciting um, as a researcher? It's exciting because those nursing home people have developed measures of the quality of care that is provided in nursing homes. Also, labor is an important input into the production of this nursing home quality. Okay, so. Questions for today, do immigrant inflows affect nursing labor markets at all? It's not an obvious question um, of whether they have impacts on wages. And if they do, do they, if they do, or even if they don't, are there impacts on the quality of care provided in nursing homes? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this is, so, so I, I've seen a bunch of papers coming out on the effects of immigration inflows on health both of immigrants and natives. And do you think this is the most important sort of mechanism that's probably at work, how uh, immigrant inflows are affecting labor markets? I mean, I've heard discussion about the role of immigrant inflows in, in, in social connectedness of communities and how that relates to health. And Fair so, enough, that's a good question and I don't know the answer. I can only tell you about the mechanism through nursing homes. Mm -hmm. I can imagine other mechanisms. Immigrants tend to be very healthy mm -hmm. and they're healthy because maybe only the healthy ones come here, but it seems like they also engage in healthier behaviors and this could have pure effects. Mm -hmm. So on that, I don't know. My guess is that if we're looking at health outcomes of American native pe people over the age of 85, this is probably the most important mechanism. <laughs> um, but on these other populations, I don't know. All right, so um, motivation. People are getting older, so this is the check, so you probably know this. Um, number of people age 65 and above by age group, and you can see that over time there's just a larger population of older people in the United States. We knew this, baby boomers are getting older, people are living longer, so there's just more old people. Um, and especially when you're looking at the share of the population, which is 85 and above. Now part of this isn't such, such terrible news because People are living longer, but they're also healthier. But um, two thirds of 85 plus year olds have difficulty with doing, with, with ADL. So these are activities of daily living, things like bathing and eating and getting dressed. Two thirds is, is a big chunk of people that are needing a lot of help with even everyday kinds of things. And there's more and more of these people that are needing this help. Um, this is really, really expensive. So 20% of uh, those requiring long-term care uh, live in nursing homes. 20% is a lot, although I, I want to stress that most of this care is provided by informal, 
Most of the care is provided informally by friends and family members. Still, 20% are in nursing homes. Nursing homes are really, really expensive. $134 billion was spent on institutional care in the year 2011. If you don't plan on ever needing a nursing home or going to a nursing home or having a family member that needs to go to a nursing home, you should still care about this because you pay taxes and two-thirds of nursing home care is paid for by Medicare and Medicaid. So we should all be concerned about the growing health needs of people. Oh, so this was to show you. When I, when I see things like $134 billion, I think, oh yeah, that's just a lot of money and it's hard to think about what that really means with numbers that I'm familiar with. This is um, the average annual costs of nursing homes um, for a semi-private room. The good news is that in California, it's not as expensive as in Connecticut, <laughs> but uh, it's still you to move to California. So I guess I have to move to California. Yeah, but still, seventy-four thousand to ninety-one thousand a year. That's a very nice yearly salary, um, and that goes just to taking care of older people in the nursing home. Okay, so I just told you, nursing uh, care really expensive. Lots of people are becoming older. Um, we're going to make choices. We're going to have to make choices whether we like it or not. One choice is just to spend more money on this institutional type of care. The other choice is to continue spending the same amount of money and provide worse quality care. Terrible choices. But maybe immigrants can. Can immigration policy be used to address some of these concerns? I don't know if you know, but there have been visas in the past specifically for nurses. Um, there was one that started in 1989, which was a visa specifically for nurses. That program ended in a few years after it started, I think in 1995. There's another one that it was for 500 nurses per year, and these nurses could only work in hospitals in very poor areas without a lot of nurses. My point is that people have thought about this in the past, but it hasn't been something that's been used very much. And regardless of the programs specifically for high-skilled registered nurses, you'll see in the paper that a lot of the nursing care is actually provided by lower-skilled nurses, like nursing assistants, where these people are coming on the, the chain migration kinds of family-related visas and not those specifically for nursing assistants. So how important um, nursing is to the quality of care maybe should have an impact on the types of immigration policies we enact in the United States, or at least it should be given consideration when making these policies. Okay, so our focus is going to be on the impacts of the immigration population in the United States, as it is, which happens to be very low skilled. Um, uh, and so we're looking at the impact of this on the quality of care provided in person. Okay, so what is the theoretical impact of immigration on the quality of care provided in nursing homes? I'll tell you how I first started thinking about this and how my thinking about this has evolved. What I originally had in mind, immigrants come to the United States and they drive down the wages of nurses and so the equilibrium wages of nurses and so nursing homes can afford to hire more nurses and then there's more nurses to take care of patients and people are better cared for. Yes? I want to stress that this can happen even if the immigrants themselves are not becoming nurses. It could be that immigrants come to, the, low skilled immigrants come to the United States, they become housekeepers and they crowd out natives from these housekeeping jobs and so the natives who would have otherwise worked in housekeeping they become nurses but still drive down the wages of nurses the nursing homes hospitals can hire more nurses and then provide better care for the um the elderly population and people that need care yes um is there reason to believe that this may be happening yes um so my co-author, Francesc, has a paper looking at the impact of immigrant, immigrant inflows on household service wages, services wages in Spain. I have another paper which looks at the impact 
of immigrant inflows on the wages of childcare workers in the United States. And there are decreases in these types of uh, occupations. But this isn't an obvious question because in general, it's very hard to find that immigrant inflows decrease the wages, the equilibrium wages of natives. They do in certain populations, in certain occupations, in certain occupations for certain um, groups of people, yes, in certain regions, but in general, it's hard to do. In fact, the only other paper that I know that looks at the impact of immigrants on nurses um, is this one by Cortez and Pam. And she finds that the wages of native-born registered nurses, these are the high-skilled nurses, they don't seem to respond to immigrant inflows. Yes? Okay, but this is not the only mechanism through which immigration may affect the quality of care. So imagine that immigrants come and they do become nurses. Um, it could be that the foreign-born nurses, because they may have difficulties in entering other occupations, may become nurses and become better nurses once they're in the United States. So even if we keep the same number of nurses, it could be that the foreign-born nurses provide better quality care on average. Did I just make this up? No. Um, Cortez and Pan in a different paper find that Philippine educated registered nurses in the United States, they earn higher wages than natives probably because they're really well trained in the Philippines and they're very, um, they're very high skilled workers, they tend to get jobs in hospitals as opposed to nursing homes, they probably get the higher wages because they provide better quality services. It could also be that there was a selection process in the Philippines, there absolutely given is. that this is one way of coming to America, yes, some yes. of the best and the brightest you know, were went into these nursing homes. That's programs. exactly what happened. The Philippines developed a, I mean, it's a policy that they want to educate nurses with the intent of exporting them. Um, and it's absolutely true. There's a double selection. There's selection into who becomes nursing, nurse who studies nursing in the Philippines, and it is uh, the very high ability people. And then on top of that, the people who actually get the jobs in the United States are even more selective. So much so that a typical nurse educated in the Philippines um, earns I don't want to lie about the number, but I want to say something like five times the salary of a doctor, a lawyer, these kinds of occupations in the Philippines. So the people who come here are not just anybody. Okay, so foreign educated RNs do not decrease the wages of registered nurses in the United States. There's more! Again, this is, I don't want to be too excited because it's not my work. I just wanted to stress that it could be that there are better... Um, they're better, they're better quality nurses. Um, in states, in the United States, with more foreign-born nurses, so more competition from foreign-born nurses, there's a decrease in the number of natives that choose to become nurses. However, those that do become nurses, they tend to score better on the entrance exams for nurses. Yes, so, um, so it, it could be both of these. And are the, I'm sorry, the, the, are those also identifying effects off of sort of shift share types of things? Of course. Like okay. Do you have a sense that there's a difference in quality of nurses between like nursing homes and hospitals? Yes, there are okay. nurses in hospitals are better quality, they get paid more. Um, yeah, maybe we could talk about that. That's for later, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about nursing homes. How do I think about the product that nurses provide? Sorry? How do I think about the product that nurses provide? How do That's I coming in a few slides, and then I'll, if I haven't answered your question. Um, okay, so nurses in health outcomes, the literature. I could have put a bunch of papers here, and I just didn't, that show that nurses in general are associated with better health outcomes. Um, there's a lot of these papers. I want to focus on the papers that use, that are written by economists i.e. that use plausibly exogenous sources of variation. So, lower uh, relative wages of nurses um, in the United Kingdom have resulted, so some places, let me just tell you, in the United Kingdom there's a rule about what the wages of nurses should be. 
but this is the same across different cities. And so relative to other occupations, in some cities, nurses get paid a lot. In some cities, nurses don't get paid very much. So in the cities where nurses don't get paid very much, um, there are fewer people that want to become nurses, and there are more deaths among heart attack patients. What else? Nurse strikes lead to increases in in-hospital mortality. Uh, another paper that kind of motivated this research Mortality, you should know this, mortality decreases during bad, mortality decreases during bad economic times, increases during good economic times. Why might this be? Um, a lot of this is driven by elderly women in nursing homes, and there is evidence in this paper that during good economic times, it's really hard for nursing homes to hire good help, and so this may lead to, to mortality. Cool paper. What does that have to do with women being the patients? It had, no, it's just that they looked at a lot of this. So this came from a literature which shows that in general, higher deaths. And then if you look at specific populations, um, it happens to be women in nursing homes that's driving a lot of this, as opposed to people who are working, which is what a lot of people had in mind from okay. this literature. OK, so this is a fun new one. There was a, materni a very generous maternity leave program in Denmark which granted more generous paid, paid maternity leave this, uh, to people in Denmark. This had very little impact on, uh, on doctors because they weren't taking the leave regardless. Um, very little impact on nursing assistants, but it had large impacts on the, uh, the market for nurses. So there was just very few people. The reason no impact on nursing assistants is that it's easy to train yourself to become a nursing assistant. It takes a while to become a nurse. Okay, so they found that in, um, in response to this policy, which, made, which had a negative shock on the nursing labor market, there was actually an increase in the mortality, uh, in the increase in mortality among people in nursing homes. Good news, that in the newest version of this paper, they started looking at hospitals. The good news is that there was no decrease in mortality in hospitals, but there has been a, uh, there, were, there was an increase in readmission rates. So maybe this is related to hiring better people in, um, in hospitals, I'm not sure. Or that we need even more nurses in nursing homes, I'm not sure what that is. So what, what's the evidence on the nursing home sort of literature? Now you think about this, about, about who chooses to, you know, so that how might the types of elderly people um, who choose to live in nursing homes change with perceptions of what the staff looks like, either immigrant and native? Good question. And, you know. and I do not know, I don't know that answer. In my data, I don't know anything about the composition of the people working in that nursing home. Mm -hmm. I do know where the nursing homes are, so it probably wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to try to look at the... I could merge the nursing home. I have merged the nursing home data. Um, I could merge that with... Thank right. you. Are you. Are you giving me yeah. a pen to... Yeah. Thanks. I could merge this. To, to guess to guess at who the people are, mm -hmm. but I haven't done that yet. What I thought you were going to say is something that you should keep in mind. What happens to the composition of people in nursing homes as the quality of care improves? Um, and I would fit, so, and that is important to keep in mind. It could be yep. that relative as the quality of care improves, <laughs> different people better, may choose to go to the nursing right, homes. Right, it's basically a sample selection issue, right? That the, 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 that the yeah, if healthier, if, if, if healthier types or less health types, I could probably tell stories in both directions about, about who's more likely who's to more be likely. Nursing, yeah. In terms of interpreting the results that I will show you, I can say that immigrant, um, immigrants do work as nurses, but they're more highly represented in home care workers. As home care workers, you don't need a license. Um, you don't need to be documented. And, um, and so I think that in places with lots of immigrants, mm -hmm. if the, it's probably going to have a bigger effect on the home care market. Mm -hmm. And if there's better quality home care help, mm -hmm. then that would make it so that only the very sickest people would go to the nursing home. 
So that would bias me in terms of finding worse outcomes for the people in nursing homes than the outcomes that I actually observe. I like to answer different questions than what people ask. <laughs> okay, so basically, back to what do nurses do? There's actually three different nurses, three different types of nurse, two different types of nurses. Uh, let me just tell you. So, uh, different nurse types. Registered nurses, these are people who, some of the Filipinos actually all have um, a bachelor's degree, but most registered nurses in the United States, they just have an associate's degree. They earn the most amount of money. According to the BLS, it's a, it's a good job, they, it pays well. Um, it's a hard job, but it pays well. So, According to the BLS, what they do is provide and coordinate patient care, educate patients about health conditions, and provide advice and emotional support to patients and their family members. I'm not sure exactly what this means. I do know that registered nurses are in charge of giving, they are in charge, they are allowed and in charge of giving medications to patients. Um, okay, below that, licensed practical nurses. They make less money, they provide basic nursing care under the direction of a registered nurse and a doctor. They can give patients medications. Below that, they're not nurses, they're nursing aides. It's a terrible job. Um, <laughs> their signs could become a certified nursing assistant, at least in my neighborhood. It pays Maybe not minimum wages, but maybe not too much above minimum wages. These are the types that have the most contact with the patients. They're in there with the patients. They're not looking at charts, but they're moving patients. They take the patients from the bed to the chair. They take the patients to the bathroom. If the patients make a mess of many types of messes that uh, people who need basic care can make, it's the nursing assistants that are cleaning these things up. It's not an easy job, but most of the direct contact, uh, or a lot of the direct contact between the nursing home and the actual patient, it's the nursing assistant. It's the nursing assistants who, they do the, these jobs, but they're also the ones that are probably most likely to notice if someone is not, so, is not doing so well. It's someone who's most likely to tell the nurse that, they're not themselves and maybe check their medications or that kind of thing. So it's not a good job. It's a lot of unpleasant stuff, but these are the nurses that probably spend most time with the patients themselves. And I think that's important for a lot of the outcomes um, that I'll be looking at. Okay, so um, our contribution, the first contribution is to look at the impact of immigration on the labor market on the labor market, uh, labor markets of these different nurse types. So this is a contribution to the literature because, as you know, there are these other papers that look at registered nurses. We look at these other types of nurse types, which I certainly argue are really important in the provision of care in general, and maybe especially in nursing homes. Okay, but I think the most exciting part of the paper is actually the second part, where we look directly at the impact of immigration on measures of quality of care provided in nursing homes. And the measures that we'll look at include, but are not limited to, falls, whether the patients fall, which is a big deal for the elderly population, um, declines in their abilities to do these activities of daily living, like uh, dressing, eating, bathing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, how much they report pain, do they have bed scores? That kind of thing is what you have. Okay. The third contribution that I make to this, that we make to this literature, maybe should be a different, a third bullet point, I'm not sure, but do the impacts of immigration on these quality care measures depend on the competition that the nursing homes face in their, it's, it's actually counties, and you'll see that it does. So make sure I get to that part of the paper because I think it's good. Good, ready to start with part one. Yes? Okay. So, immigration and nursing labor markets. Least exciting part of this paper, I pretty much do what every other immigration researcher has been doing for many years. I use data from the 1980-1990-2000 uh, census, as well as the five-year combined American Community Survey. 
Um, I construct my IV for immigration with 1970 census data. I put people into commuting zones using a crosswalk that David Dorn has on his website. Nothing really fancy or exciting. The estimating equation for wages, I have log wages on the left hand side. Share foreign born is the variable of interest. Um, I have controls for commuting zone level things like the age distribution, the racial composition in the commuting zone. And then in all specifications, I have commuting zone fixed effects and year fixed effects. Yes. So as someone who's not familiar with the migration literature, what's the IV that you use? Okay, so here is the IV that I use. Um, it's the IV that's used in most every immigration paper that exists. Um, let me tell you, so in ter this is the equation, and that should be enough for you, but maybe for those, for those of you who don't necessarily look at equations and love them right away, I'll try to give you some intuition on the IV that's used all the time. Okay, so what is the problem? First, let's look at this. What is the problem with just estimating this equation? Immigrants go to places where they can get higher wages. So um, maybe it's true that immigrants decrease the equilibrium wages of nurses, but immigrants are going, they're choosing the cities where, or at least the nursing immigrants, they're going to choose the cities where they can get the highest wages for nurses. So you may see, if you're just doing this OLS regression, that cities with with more immigrants have higher wages, but maybe it goes the other way around. The, the cities with more higher wages, they attract more immigrants. So that's the entire need of having an, uh, an IV. So that, because in general we would expect this to be positive when the true value of alpha 1 may be negative. Okay, so what is the way to deal with this? Well, we would love to have immigrants placed in different cities for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with the wages of nurses in those cities. Yes? So what, is, um, so what is something that may drive people to certain cities for reasons that have nothing to do with the wages paid in those cities? It's nice to go to places where you have a friend. Yes? <laughs> Except for Caddy, who prefers not to have friends. <laughs> or maybe she doesn't get along with Spaniards. I'm not sure. Okay, so imagine that there were two cities in the same state. Oh my goodness, there were some cities like San Diego that happened to have a lot of Spaniards in 1970. And there were other places that happened to have a lot of people from Turkey. So, I don't know, is there a city in California that has a lot of Turks? Probably LA. LA? Okay, so imagine that LA, there was lots of people from Turkey. Okay, so that was in 1970. For maybe random reasons, or maybe the economy in 1970. What happens after 1970? Well, LA, San Diego, different things are happening in the economies of these two cities, yes? But, when the immigrants come from Turkey, they may want to go to LA, and when the immigrants come from Spain, they want to come to San Diego. Yes? Okay, so that's one part of it. People want to go to places where there's others from their country of origin. The other part is that there's been lots of changes in Spain and in Turkey that is affecting the number of immigrants that are coming from these places um, after 1970. Yes? So it could be that, so if it happened to be that there were more immigrants coming from Turkey to the U.S., maybe because of the crazy economic conditions in Turkey, um, maybe because of lots of great tourism in Spain and people don't want to leave, I don't know. Maybe because of immigration policy has made it easier for people to come from Spain or Turkey. All of these different things impact the number of immigrants that are coming from these different countries. If it happens to be that lots of Spaniards come, we will expect to see more immigrants in San Diego. If it happens to be that a lot of Turkish people come, we'll see a lot of them in LA. That's an example with just two countries of origin, but I use all of the countries of origin in making predictions about which cities end up with more immigrants. You got it under control now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the IV is actually the share. What is it? The IV is the share. The IV is the share so in 1970? 
um, and that is interacted with the flows. So this is the 1970 share, and this is interacted with the flows since 1970, and I just divided by the commuting zone population to get better first stages. I understand the reason uh, so in the outer right hand sense paper, they use commuting zone as the geographic unit. Yep. The, the idea of a commuting zone is a cluster of counties. Yep. And uh, the reason they you to do that is because you could have a lot of zero shocks because the manufacturing plants tend to be gathered more agglomerated than the other. Uh, it could be wrong. Um, but, uh, have you tried just using counties as your geo unit? I cannot use counties for this part of the paper because I use census data. Right. I could use MSAs, yeah. and I can tell you that I started this project using MSAs, and results were yeah, right, right. about the same. So I, the commuting zones and MSAs are very similar to each other for urban areas. The advantage of using commuting zones is that even rural areas, they go to work. Mm -hmm. They may commute a little longer. Um, so even rural areas are part of commuting zones. Um, and so there are more commuting zones than there are MSAs, but there aren't a lot of people in these commuting zones that are not in metropolitan areas, so we don't care. So the, so the big, I, I won't. Uh, mm. Yeah, no, no, just to play, play sort of the devil's advocate, right, about, about this instrument, which I know is used very, very widely, so it's not about your paper, it's just sort yeah. of about this. So, so the biggest threat to identification using this instrument is some sort of persistence in characteristics yeah. of the location uh, over yes. time. So, look at this. Um, <laughs> this is what's driving things, right, and maybe in the example that I gave, Maybe there's just something about uh, the places that happen to have a lot. I mean, in the United States, it's it's Mexicans that are really driving this instrument because there's the big flows are coming from Mexicans, um, and so if the places this is important if the places in 1970 that happen to have lots of Mexicans would have had a different trajectory of nursing wages or quality of care um, in nursing homes, then that's the problem with my instrument. And you should keep in mind stories which would generate a relationship between places that happen to have lots of Mexicans in the United States in 1970 and in the future nurse wages, and what I think is most important, the quality of care provided in nursing homes. Or, or, health, or, or health. or I mean, some of those measures that you're calling kind of quality of care could also sort of be interpreted as, as, as I mean, not the bed sore, you know, the, yeah. the, that, that I think is, is more directly sort of related to quality of care, but as I think about sort of falls and activities of daily living, that, that's in part char having characteristics of of the elderly that are choosing to be in the, in, the, in the nursing homes. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying the story no, no, is no, easy. No, no, but I think to, it's, a, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. I'm just saying easy. that I have less of a hard job defending this instrument sure. compared to the people that are just looking at average wages. No question. Have That's, you tried to take the Mexico country out? I have not. I actually thought of that idea just now as I used the Mexicans as an example. <laughs> um, other questions? Okay. So statistics by occupation, I don't think anything is that exciting. I will say that um, the, the share of immigrants that are registered nurses is very similar to the share of immigrants in all other occupations. Immigrants are not very highly represented as licensed practical nurses, um, but they are, they are overrepresented as nursing assistants. So you can keep in mind as you interpret all of the results that I'll talk about. Um, these are the median wages in the sample, not that exciting. Um, here I do the same thing separated by share foreign born. Um, places with more immigrants tend to have higher wages for these occupations. Uh, I don't think that's that exciting. Okay, first exciting thing. Um, these are the regression res I have until what time? Oh, sorry, uh, 45. 45, so. okay, we're good. Uh, these are the first set of interesting results, nursing assistant wages. In column one, I just have a uh, regular, this is really just a correlation between share foreign born and the log of the median wages of nursing assistants. And there is a negative relationship and it's statistically significant. This is kind of a big deal because we often see in wages
age regressions that the OLS suggests a positive relationship between share foreign born and for share foreign born and whatever wages you look at because immigrants like to go to places with higher wages. Um, so that's not true for nursing assistants. What else? In the second column, I add some commuting zone um, characteristics. That's not over. Not that is not overly exciting. In the third column, I add. Um, I, uh, I, I use the IV, and then that's when it really starts getting negative. That's when you see the biggest impact, which suggests that, yes, immigrants are going to places where they have higher wages, which means that once you take that into account, there's even a more negative impact on the wages of nursing assistants in response to immigrant inflows. Um, this is kind of a big deal because you don't see this um, for other occupations. I could have shown you if I did this for all workers, you, there was nothing statistically significant. I will say, however, that this four per, so, so this suggests that a one percentage point increase in the share foreign born decreases median wages of nursing assistants by about four percent. Um, this number is very similar to my work on child care workers. I think there, a one percentage point increase in share foreign born decreased wages of child care workers by about 3%. Um, in that same paper, I looked at wages of housekeeping, housekeepers and didn't find much at all. Uh, restaurant workers, there were negative impacts, but they were much smaller. So I want to stress here why why I think this, what, what I think is going on. So immigration in general may have very small impacts on wages um, in, in, in industries or in occupations where there's easy substitutability with technology. So maybe if there's lots of immigrants around and you go to McDonald's, then uh, you have a person asking for what you want. And if there aren't a lot of immigrants, then McDonald's has those self-checkout things that I have seen. So that there's this replacement with technology for that type of job. Um, another thing that may happen is for manufacturing, for example, if there's lots of, if, if the companies can find good quality labor in the United States, they may stay in the United States. If they can't, then they can just move to other countries. So this is the, one, of, one of the reasons why it's often not the case that we see that immigrants come and they depress wages. When we're talking about nurses and we're talking about childcare workers, it's very difficult for there to be substitutions with technology. It's possible, but it's just more difficult to make those substitutions. And it's very hard to have someone in, uh, in China that is taking care of your elderly grandmother for you. So if there's any occupation where we may expect to see impacts of immigrant inflows, it's these occupations. Okay, so what else? We can look at, so those results were on the median wage of, of nursing assistants. We can look across the wage distribution. Um, instead of the median wage, we can look at the, tw the wage at the 25th percentile or the wage at the 75th percentile. And it seems like the bigger impacts are at the bottom of the distribution, but we still see something at the top for licensed practical nurses the impacts are definitely smaller than the impacts on nursing assistants. Um, I, I do want to say one difference between this research and all of the other literature on immigration, the impacts of, wage, of immigrant inflows on wages, most of the other literature just looks at impacts on natives, and this includes the immigrants in there, because I really want to look at the quality, and so it makes sense to include the immigrants in any way. Um, so this may be why we don't see much of an impact on licensed practical nurses. Immigrants don't tend to become licensed practical nurses as much. Um, all right, so, and that was, again, felt at the bottom of the wage distribution. A consistent with the work of Patricia Cortez and Jessica Pam, we don't see negative impacts on registered nurses. We see nothing at the bottom distribution, but at the top of the distribution, where there are lots of these Filipino high-quality nurses, there actually increase wages. Maybe because they um, attract the best quality U.S. 
workers to become nurses and because the Filipino nurses themselves are very high quality and get paid high wages. And this is controlling for the age of the workers? This is controlling for nothing but the commuting zone fixed effects. So the age, the age and experience of the we could put that stuff in. Could change as well. So the reason why I, I could do this, and the Cortez and Pan papers did this. I didn't put this in the in my paper because my intent is not because I care so much about the wages of these workers. What I care is about the costs to nursing homes, and so. And so that's why I, I don't care that you're getting paid a fair wage. I just care about your wage and the impact on your future quality, which is why I didn't do that. But I could let them in. Well, if, sorry. Uh, I was wondering if you've looked at the skill level of the immigrants themselves that are coming in. Tell so, me what you have in mind. Well, I mean, so if we're thinking, the move the story is that it's low skill immigrants coming in, then sure, their story totally makes sense. But, I mean, it might be high school immigration. That are becoming, and they are, right. the registered nurses are if high school. it's registered nurses, so, I mean, I mean, when you're saying immigration, are you, I mean, are you just looking at immigration? I'm just looking at immigration. Just overall? Yes. So, yeah. There's so, what, so you know what, that is fair. I could separate. I mean, I think, I think you can actually, you can find some more support for the story that you're telling if, you know, those results do actually skew versus, you know, low school high school immigration. Yeah, I could I mean, put them I think, in. Yeah, I, I mean, could I put think, them both in at the same time. I mean, in thinking about, me I mean, it's a sort of mechanisms kind of at work about why, you know, why you're seeing sort of the net effect you do can mm -hmm. help tell, yeah, I agree, can sort of help tell the story. I know there's a high correlation, but I don't think it's perfect correlation between maybe Caddy knows places that receive lots of low-skilled immigrants, do they also receive high-skilled? Honestly, what I see when I see that regression is that it's just a labor supply shift. Yeah. And then what happens in the last category is you have all those higher skill migrants. Yep. And so, yeah, those might be the ones that pay even more attention on where they go, and they choose those locations purposely. That is a good point. Okay. Well, if I'm low skill, I'm just going whatever I have connections. That I right. Can you don't choose. My job. I just find work at a home, whatever. Right. But really, the increase in that labor supply is really having these. Not the economic effect of lowering wages for that particular group. For that particular group, that makes sense. And if you're coming from the Philippines to work yeah. as a nurse, you yeah. are going to go where the I'm best not sure I could instrument that, however, with the share of nurses necessarily, because that is so many options. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I would still leave the share of overall immigrants. Over, no, no, no. As a point, so I could put the. I was thinking of putting the share of low-skilled immigrants and the share of high-skilled. And I just don't know... You could, yeah. I could put it in the regression, I just don't know... If, at one point, I wanted to put share females and share males, since it's mostly females that become nurses. That doesn't do anything because male and female immigrants are so highly correlated. Yeah. Yeah. But the low-skilled and high-skilled, I think I may yeah, be able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be interesting. Then that would be cool. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so I, I just showed you that wages are lower in places with more immigrants, but that could be because there's just less demand for nurses in certain places with more immigrants. We've already talked about the fact that immigrants tend to be healthier. Maybe they don't, places with lots of immigrants, they're healthier, other people are healthier, nobody goes to hospitals. Uh, nobody goes to nursing homes, and then that's why the wages are lower. It's a demand sh that would be a demand shift as opposed to a supply shift. And so here I show you evidence that maybe it's not a demand shift and it's actually a supply shift. I'm not sure exactly uh, how to define or to show a supply shift. So I just here are three different potential ways you can choose whichever one you like best. Um, I have in the first column the number of workers in each of the occupation, so the number of people that write in the census that they work as nursing assistants, the number of people that write in the census that they are licensed practical nurses, same thing for registered nurses. And to make the coefficient easier to, um, to interpret, instead of share foreign born for this specific column, I look at the number of foreign born workers. So num I'm regressing numbers on numbers. And I find that they are positive impacts. For every 100 new immigrants to a commuting zone, 5.7 of them work as nursing assistants, uh, practically zero, become licensed practical nurses, and 1.5 becomes a registered nurse. So that it does seem to be a supply shift. 
um, I can look at total hours worked last year. Again, positive down the uh, positive across the three different types of nurses. Um, to get at this question whether it's the immigrants that themselves that are providing better quality care or are they just pushing they're just they just changing labor markets um, or pushing natives into nursing occupations. In this last column I look at the share of immigrants in a commuting zone and the impact of that on the share of that occupation that is foreign born and there are positive yeah. Sorry, are they, so the columns one and two, the outcomes are conditional on, or you're, you're just looking at foreign born? No. The number of workers and... Number, number of people, so I have the census. Just the number of total people total in that people. area working in that. Yes, okay, so yes, okay. yes. Okay. More questions? Okay, conclusions from part one of, uh, of the paper. Immigrant inflows do seem to impact uh, labor markets, and especially the nursing assistance markets. Um, they are associated with decreased wages. This seems to be because of the supply shift. Now the most exciting part of the paper, are there any impacts of the quality of, are there any impacts on the quality of care in the nursing homes? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so what do I use for this part of the paper? It's, um, it's nursing home level data. Um, and I get it from this Shaping Long-Term Care in America project at Brown University. It's, the data is called LTC Focus. It's really cool data. They don't actually collect any data themselves. They just put together lots of data on nursing homes from various sources. And they take this data and put it in a format which researchers can use quickly and easily, and you can easily download it from their web page. <laughs> you need to put in your email first or, or something, but it, it's kind of nice. Okay, so it integrates data from various sources, I've already said this. Um, they have data from 2000 to the year 2014. What I do is put together all of the nursing homes that appear in 2000 to 2002 and then all of them that appear from 2006 to 2008, and all of them that appear from 2012 to 2014. So I kind of trying to mimic the, reg the regular, the other immigration literature, which uses 1980, 1990, 2000 data, but I have fewer years of data. <coughs> okay, so I merged this with, um, with data from the American Fact Finder, where you can get county level data. Um, from the nursing home data, I know the counties that they're in, and it's a lot easier to put counties into commuting zones for anyone who has tried. And so I get the nursing homes and put them into commuting zones by county, and then I get information on share foreign born at the county level and put them into commuting zones that way. And uh, same might be as before, and I don't think there's anything else. Here are lots of details on where the data come from, which you can read about in the paper, or you can read really quickly. Now's your chance. <laughs> okay, so descriptive statistics on nursing Excuse homes. me, on the previous slide, mm -hmm. what was that about two metro area samples? Oh, 1970 has four different samples, where 1970 they had some questions asked to some people, and then other people were randomly chosen to answer some different questions. Um, and some people, and then for privacy reasons, in some surveys, they have information on metropolitan area. In others, they have information on the state. It usually doesn't matter except when you, in places where you can identify, in, in people living in places where if they knew the MSA and the state, they could know where people, anyway. I just put the two metro ones together to get a bigger sample size. Yeah. Okay, so descriptive statistics on nursing home variables. Let me tell you about the, there's lots of outcomes. Um, and so as, as you see other versions of this paper, you may see more outcomes. Um, I'll tell you the ones that I thought were most interesting to start with. Okay, so standardized falls. Falls does not need to be standardized. It's just that it used to be that they asked how many residents in the nursing home have fallen in the past 30 days. And then they changed it in 2011 to ask since some other time. 
and because I want to use data across years, I just standardized it. I subtracted the mean divided by the standard deviation, and so you shouldn't be shocked to see that the standardized number of falls is zero. And this is true for several other of the outcomes. Okay, so the outcome that I'm doing more work on is falls, and there's just a practical reason for this, and it's just that it's of that variable, that outcome measure, that quality measure, quality of care measure is available in more years. But it's not about the falls for any particular individuals, it's about the percentage of yes. the patients who fell. In the past, let's say in the past 30 days. Yes. Do we know anything, again, just trying to get at the, the, who these patients are versus what quality of care they're receiving in the nurse? Do we know, what, what do we know just sort of descriptively about ADL declines, falls in nursing homes. Is there any sense of why, you know, why they're occurring? Again, just Okay, something. so falls, so I chose these variables because these are the things that are most likely to be influenced by the quality of care of the nurses, mm -hmm. as opposed to other, I mean, whether you have a heart attack, mm -hmm. may be influenced by the quality of care of your doctor, yeah. but maybe not the nurses. Falls in particular have been, are very much affected by nurses because, for example, when do they happen? If a patient needs to get up, maybe can get up to the bathroom but with help. If the, per, if the patient needs to go to the bathroom and asks for help and the nurse doesn't come, and asks for help and the nurse doesn't come, then eventually what often happens is that she'll get up and go to the bathroom and fall. Um, when patients are experiencing pain, they're more likely to get up and then fall. Um, I mean, it could also be that it depends on the way that the, the nurses are actually holding them that affects falls. So falls are something that has been found in the liter sorry, that has been found in the literature is something that's very sensitive to the quality of nursing. But the problem is, it's also going to be sensitive to the presence of relatives to possibly right. help the patient. I haven't thought about and that. And immigration is also going to be correlated with whether a, a family member is present because the more traditional cultures, Hispanic, Asian, especially Asian, where the elderly are, there's a tremendous yes, accent yes, on, yes. On, on taking care of your elderly parents they are more likely to sleep in the hospital or the nursing home in this yeah, case. Yeah, or just watch. And or watch you know that and that help that their elderly uh, uh, relative. So when you have, you, you know, I am very um, skeptical that this is, has a lot to do with wages. It's very likely that this has to do with the presence of family members and where you have more immigrants, you're more likely to see family members yes. helping okay. the elderly. Yes, okay, so I just looked at, at cheated um, to see what I had included in this very last uh, specification. So right now, I keep going back and forth on what I want to control for in these regressions and not. Um, so one thing that I can control for. With the nursing home data, I don't know anything about whether the residents themselves are foreign born. What I can do for, however, and what I have done in other specifications, but not the ones that I sent I have today for you, I can find using the census data what share of uh, people in nursing homes or in institutional, yeah, what share of people in nursing homes are foreign born. Yeah. And it's true that in commuting zones with more foreign-born people, there is more, there's a higher share of foreign-born residents in nursing homes, but in general, the share of foreign-born people in nursing homes is very low to make it have much of an impact on, um, on the quality measures. I have run these regressions I believe I took out that control because my co-author thought that it's endogenous, that better quality care, more immigrants come. I can put that back in. But I can tell you, I, I have no opinion on whether, I didn't have that site because it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, okay, so what else did I use? 
ADL decline. So this is not looking at how much difficulty people are having when they go in. It's declined. So are, are they worse off than when they first arrived at the nursing home or 30 days prior? Um, experiences of daily pain. If their pain medication is not monitored effectively, they're going to feel more pain. Um, maybe that one is more related to registered nurses since they're actually giving the medications. I'm not sure, but it it's, could be the nursing assistants that are telling the registered nurses that this person is experiencing pain. Pressure ulcers is one where if people are just left on their beds and not allowed to move, they develop these pressure ulcers. It's a terrible thing and it's a direct, directly impacted by the quality of care. Um, technology. This is interesting. So I said that we would expect to see child care, sorry, we would expect to see labor market wage impacts on these occupations which are very difficult to substitute with technology and that's true for nursing but there are some ways to substitute labor for technology it's just that they're very bad ways to do this um, so um, restraints are so catheters are one so one thing that that you can do uh, for someone who has problems with deciding when it's time to go to the bathroom is to say, okay, every uh, two hours we're going to go to the bathroom and you need to do your business. That is labor intensive. Or you can put a catheter in and uh, you don't need to watch the person as much, but it's terrible for your health. Um, you're more likely to develop infections. The other one is restraints. If someone is hallucinating and is getting out of their beds or is being dangerous, one thing you can do is have a person with, with the patient talking and trying to calm them down or at least watching that they're doing nothing dangerous. Another thing that you can do uh, if you don't have a lot of, of nursing assistance is to just keep them in their beds like this. So these are, yes. So I just think the, the share for in one here is that the share for in one point or the share for in one work in nursing? This is share for in born in the commuting zone. I specifically do not want to look at the share for in born in nursing as my main impact, as, as my main regressor, because if immigrants are coming and taking those housekeeping jobs and, and more people are going into nursing, that's fine, that's still an impact of immigrant inflows. Although I could, uh, I could put, I could run the regressions with share foreign born in nursing as well. But yeah, since I have that information. Well, yeah, I mean, I was just wondering, the places that have a higher share of foreign born immigrants in nurse, working as nurses, and they, they have better health outcomes overall for the elderly, because these individuals have nothing to do in a sense. I mean, once is elderly person, and in fact, you could even separate them by ethnicity so that they are not relatives. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know ethnicity of the residents. But, I mean, but, but at least you can see people that are working a higher share of foreign born in nursing and really relates to better health outcomes. Yes, so even if I were to find, I haven't run that regression um, because I feel strongly that this is the more, uh, this is yeah. the more policy relevant one. Yes, um, of course, overall, it, uh, I'm yeah, just saying there's other mechanisms which may be equally yeah, important yeah, yeah, or more important. But, I was just thinking, but it's still yeah. interesting to know if it's the quality of care from these foreign born nurses themselves, yeah. who may have been doctors yeah. in their home countries and come here and, and they become nurses. Yeah, the cultural arguments I was getting at in terms of when, you know, nursing assistants especially are easily substitutable with family members who yes. don't have much experience yes. with medicine. And the cultural argument is not only about whether the patient or, the, or, the, or the, their, their children are foreign born, because it could be that, you know, Chinese Americans, Japanese Americans, many of these other, uh, you know, they could already be two, three generations in the United States. And they might and still, still have, have very members. different values. And I can talk about this as a Jew in yep. America, that you know, Jewish people tend to be a lot more family oriented and more, much more likely to attend their elderly in the hospital compared to Christian Americans. So Fair you enough. have these cultural differences. And it could be that there are places with, uh, with more, it could be that the places with more immigrants are exactly the places with the enclaves. 
because maybe uh, Easy San for Francisco those that has Chinatown, so it's going to attract more Chinese in in recent years compared to you know. But then if you have a lot of Chinese Americans in the in the nursing homes in San Francisco, yep. you might see very different behavior than you will see in in a nursing home in Kansas where people came from Germany and for many many generations, you know, not prior. from China and. So you, that that's you know that's going to be an alternative. That's excellent. And so I, I don't. I still am not convinced that it will have that much of an impact, given the proportion of the population with these ancestral backgrounds. Although it is possible. Um, however, it is very possible that the impacts are stronger in areas like Kansas, and they're weaker in areas like San Diego, and that would be exciting to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. That would be really interesting. Uh, do you think that because these cultures have, these people have these cultural values that they're even less likely to send their to the nursing homes to begin with? Yes, that's exactly why I don't think... That's another factor. Right? So that is, ex I do, so that I can look. And it, it's the share of the immigrants that are in nursing homes is very small everywhere. And so that's why I don't think that's what's driving this. I don't think the immigrants themselves or the family members of the immigrants themselves are driving these results. But it could be that if you include the immigrants, also their children and their grandchildren, then, then maybe we could find no, a you should, you should get, um, just because of time, you should make sure you get We get to my cool results. stuff. Yeah. You're right, all right. Forget about descriptive statistics. Oh my goodness, there's so much cool stuff that I would still want to show you. <laughs> Um, okay, so first identification strategy. I see the same nursing homes in different years. And so the first thing I forget about the IV, but the first thing I do is take a nursing home that is observed in 2000 and again in 2006 and again later on, and there's variation over time in different commuting zones in the share foreign born. And I can look just with these nursing home fixed effects, which presumably leaves constant everything about a nursing home that stays constant over time. Um, and, and do we see impacts? I didn't tell you. Important nursing home characteristics, which we take into account a lot of the health concerns that you have. In, in these models, I have the average acuity index. It's calculated based on the needs of the patients on average in that particular nursing home. Um, it takes into account how much help they need with things, the number of residents re having, requiring special treatments, how many have dementia, complicated formula, you can, uh, you can look for it online or ask me, but this is a very important control that takes into account a lot of these measures. And so what's left is hopefully the things that nurses have some control over. Okay, so, important stuff. Um, if you just look at the correlation, there's a negative impact. If I add a bunch of these nursing home characteristics, most importantly, this acuity index, yeah, it falls a little bit, but not that much. Um, next, I add state fixed effects. Maybe in some states, nursing homes provide different quality on average than others decreases, but not by, I would say, not by that much. Um, then I can add commuting zone fixed effects, stays about the same. I add the nursing home fixed effects, it stays about the same. So the key here is that I add lots of these different characteristics and not much changes. It does not seem like immigrants are going to the places that provide better care, at least in terms of the false. Um, forget about it, it's a big deal. Yes, it's a big deal, nobody wants to fall. <laughs> okay, so that was that without an instrument. So now I'm going to tell you the, the parts of the paper that make me... That's what they make, they make me... <laughs> okay, so now let's IV. We can think about the same equation. But let me tell you a problem with trying to use the IV that's always used in this immigration literature on the nursing home. The problem is that I only have nursing home data starting in 2000, ending in 2014. I don't have that 1980, 1990, 2000. Yes? Okay. So I try to do the first stage, the instrument of predicted foreign born on the share foreign born. If I have state fixed effects in that specification, everything's fine. Look at this F statistic 158, typical of what's been done in the literature. If I have commuting zone fixed effects, look at that first stage. 
if I have nursing home fixed, if it actually gets that, the first day, I can't use this instrument. I can use the instrument with state fixed effects. I can't use the instrument with the commuting zone or the nursing home fixed effects. So that, that's the thing. So now your job is to think about, is this problematic? What does this mean? I'm still using the instrument. However, I'm allowing for variation within the same state, so the, 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 the instrument is predicting the number of immigrants in one city, actually this is a good example with the California, with the LA and San Diego, the instrument is predicting how many immigrants are in San Diego versus LA, as opposed to what it often does in the rest of the literature, which is what I did in the nursing home part, of predicting the changes in immigrants in LA versus San Diego. Yes? So with the state fixed effects, I'm looking within the state, but I'm using information both on the changes over time and on the levels across different commuting zones in the same state. Okay. Um, so, so what was I doing? I'm just continuing on. I've already shown you these results. Here's the correlation. This is the effect when I have a bunch of controls. This is the OLS with state fixed effects. This is the OLS with commuting zone fixed effects. This is the effect with nursing home fixed effects. These just use variation over time in the same, in this case, nursing home, in the number of immigrants. Yes? You may not like this because maybe um, in certain cities there's more immigrants going to pla there's more immigrants going to places with more improvements in the nursing homes for who knows what reason. So that's why you think may think this one's biased. This one with the IV and state fixed effects, you may think this is biased because maybe places with more immigrants in 1970 of the types where there are more flows after that, they would have had better quality nursing homes for reasons that have nothing to do with the actual flows after that. So you may, so I told you, so think about the bias that may result. The key here though is that whatever bias you had in mind for not believing this result, that negative 3.6, is very different from whatever bias you're telling in your heads right now for not believing this result. But the really cool thing is that these are very similar. And so, yes, it's possible coincidentally that these biases end up with the same type of bias, but it's also possible that immigrants are not going to places that happen to have fewer falls in nursing homes. And if that's the case, if immigrants are going for other reasons that have nothing to do with the falls or are uncorrelated with the falls, then there shouldn't be much bias, and so all of these different sources of variation should lead to the same outcomes, and that's what we find. I am running out of time, and so I'm going to... It's very resilient. It's very resilient, yes. Okay, here I have lots of different measures, and I've already talked about the measures. Immigrants tend to improve all of them, except bed sores. I don't know why that is. Next! <laughs> um, market structure. Okay, I'm... <laughs> this is the idea. Forget this, I'm gonna show you the results. Okay, so competition among nursing homes. So in places where you're the only nursing home, if for some reason you can pay your nurses less, or the nurses are providing better care, you can just give the patients less food, and you can just make more profits. If there's lots of competition for residents to come to your nursing home, and there's something that makes it easier to provide better care, then you better be providing better care in your nursing home, otherwise all of the people will go to your competitor nursing home down the street. Yes? So, where do we expect this relationship between immigrants and the decrease in falls to be strongest? We expect it for nursing homes that have a lot of competition. That's exactly what we find. So, the more... Um, the more monopoly power a nursing home has, you don't see these falls. If that's not cool enough, some nursing homes um, are for profit, some of them are not for profit. So where should you see these impacts of competition on the quality? It should be in the nursing homes. And so you see, it should be in the nursing homes that are for profit. 
They're the ones that are going to be mostly influenced by competition in the nursing home market, and that's exactly where we see it. If we look at the nursing homes that are not for profit, we don't see anything on the interaction. Oh, I'm sorry I rushed through the most exciting parts of the paper. I was afraid this would happen. Okay, so conclusion is, it seems like immigrants um, do help provide better care to, um, to nursing home patients, either directly or indirectly through nursing labor markets. Um, and those nursing homes and competitive environments are driving these relationships between immigrants and the improvements in care. Immigration policy uh, might be used to address the fiscal impacts of needing to care for an aging baby boom population, while at the same time ensuring that they're well cared for. That's all, and I'm two minutes after, but I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this stuff. Sure, I, I think we'll take one last question and then... Well, if anybody, I, I feel like I don't want to monopolize, but, but the finding about for-profit or the concentration is compatible with a cultural explanation that's in line with what the young man there said. Like, let's say you have a city with a lot of Chinese Americans who are very devoted to their elderly parents, yep. you will have few nursing homes. And so you will, um, you know, it's more likely that there is... Yeah, you may have fewer beds, but not necessarily fewer nursing homes. What I've learned, I didn't know this before, but it seems, before starting working on this project, there's a lot of variation in the number of beds of the nursing homes. There are some of these gigantic nursing homes with, with many beds, and maybe that's the one nursing home with a lot of monopoly power. In other markets, there are nursing homes with as little as 12 beds, right. and maybe that are competing with each other. Right, but the, the, the structure of the industry is likely to also it could have be affected by cultural the number of influence. Thank you very much, Delia. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. For we'll, we'll complete the double header of immigration uh, policy speakers next week. Uh, Hani Mansour, professor of economics at the University of Colorado, is going to be here to talk about the impact of immigration policy on, on labor market outcomes. So, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. I've seen this paper, and it's really good. Oh, great! So, so you're in first.